This video shows my Continuum settings and Continuum presets that I use for working with the SoftSynth Omnisphere and some basic settings for Omnisphere that I use when controlling it from the Continuum. Omnisphere responds extremely well to external MIDI input, like the MIDI generated by the Continuum. It has a flexible modulation matrix with multiple sources and destinations with independent smoothing for each modulation routing point. Some very expressive sounds can be designed in Omnisphere that come to life under Continuum control. I like to have the Continuum Editor running when I am working with Omnisphere in the studio. I have Omnisphere running on a different computer than the computer I have my full-size Continuum connected to. I have my Continuum connected to a laptop that is running the Continuum Editor that we are looking at here, and on another computer I have Omnisphere running as an AU plugin inside Logic Pro. So, I have to make a MIDI connection from this laptop to the computer running Omnisphere. In this Continuum Editor, in the MIDI and Global settings, we can see that the Continuum is auto-detected via an ESI MIDI interface. The Continuum is currently running and connected to the Editor. The Editor is used to route the Continuum's performance MIDI into another MIDI interface, a UM1. This UM1 is then sending MIDI to another USB MIDI interface on the computer running Omnisphere. Now, if you had the Continuum Editor running on the same computer as the DAW running Omnisphere, a MIDI connection could be made by substituting this specified interface with an IAC bus connection, making sure that only the IAC bus was connected to the Omnisphere in Logic. To make this routing change in Logic, go to the Environment window and then to the Clicks and Ports layer. Disconnect the sum out from the physical input and instead connect the IAC bus that the editor is sending MIDI to. Doing a connection like this will guarantee that any MIDI data used by the Continuum to communicate with the Continuum editor will not be confused with performance data that is being used to play Omnisphere. In each of these Omnisphere Continuum presets, the MIDI flow has been streamlined. I've disabled MIDI input into the Continuum and MIDI output from the Continuum is not being sent to its internal synth, nor is any data going to a connected CVC unit. It's only going to this output which sends MIDI to Omnisphere. This MIDI routing has nothing to do with the bi-directional MIDI commands needed for communication between the editor and the Continuum. Each one of these Continuum presets sends MIDI to Omnisphere and doesn't generate a sound on its own. They are all basically the same, with some minor variations to take advantage of MIDI performance parameters in the Continuum. I found that these four presets cover all the performance variations I want to use in the Continuum when controlling Omnisphere. Common settings for these presets include a pitch bend range setting of 24, which matches the largest available pitch bend setting in Omnisphere. The front to back or Y setting has been changed from its default of CC74 to CC02, commonly called the breath controller. Doing this change avoids having to specify a user CC in Omnisphere in order to use a controller like CC74. Pressure or Z has been changed from its default setting of CC11 into channel pressure. This change was made because in Omnisphere, each part or voice has a hardwired setting which uses CC11 to control each individual voice as a volume control. While that feature is useful, it hardwires the Z parameter in the continuum to acting as a volume control if CC11 is used. It's better to use another controller like channel pressure which is more flexible because of its direct appearance in Omnisphere's modulation matrix. The way that the Continuum sends out note velocity information has been changed from its default value of static, which only sends out a velocity value of maximum, or 127 with each note, to dynamic, which will send out a velocity value that is dependent on the velocity of the finger making contact with the Continuum surface. This variable value is sometimes useful given that it can be mapped inside Omnisphere. So those are the common elements within these presets. They also have settings that are different from each other. 
The first preset, Omnisphere Mono, is more different than the other three, so I'll describe it last. The second preset, Omnisphere Perform, has a polyphony setting of 8, which matches the number of available parts inside Omnisphere, 8. That's because the way the continuum works with Omnisphere is that each part is an individual voice. Eight voice polyphony in Omnisphere is achieved by using eight individual MIDI channels, each channel controlling a separate voice or part. MIDI channels 1 through 8 from the continuum control parts 1 through 8 in Omnisphere. Notice that my Omnisphere part has its polyphony set to 1. In this Omnisphere Perform preset, there is no pitch rounding mechanisms engaged, either during the beginning, duration, or release of a note. The next preset is Omnisphere Initial Round. It's useful for percussive or pluck sounds that cause the player to quickly enter and leave the playing surface of the continuum. When playing with this quick technique, correct finger placement for accurate pitch is compromised, so rounding the initial finger position into equal temperament helps in this regard. The fourth preset is Omnisphere Round. This only has rounding during the duration of the note. Omnisphere Round is great for sounds in Omnisphere that are ensemble sounds, such as the choirs or the legato strings. The very nature of ensemble sounds makes it difficult to discern where the pitch center is, as multiple pitches are floating around the correct pitch center. Having rounding for those situations makes these ensemble sounds easier to play in tune. So, returning back to the first preset, Omnisphere Mono, it's useful for playing sounds in Omnisphere as a single voice. It has a polyphony of 1, so this single channel information is all sent out on MIDI channel 1. But, this preset is very useful when one is editing a sound in Omnisphere. That's because the way the editing in Omnisphere works is that you make all your changes to a sound in part 1. Parts 2 through 8 don't automatically receive these editing changes. The changes are only applied to the current part you are editing, which is part 1. And once you've made all your tweaks to part 1, there is a single command in Omnisphere called clone part 1. This will copy all the parameter settings in part 1 in the multi to the other 7 parts 2 through 8. So, the common editing workflow of a continuum based Omnisphere sound is to have the Omnisphere mono preset loaded in the continuum so that edit changes can be heard because you will only be playing part 1 as a mono sound in Omnisphere. And once you want to hear your changes to the sound polyphonically, you simply select clone part 1 from the utility menu in Omnisphere, then switch to another continuum sound that is polyphonic, like Omnisphere Perform, then play the part polyphonically. And if you want to make additional tweaks, just return to the Continuum preset Omnisphere Mono and adjust the sound in Omnisphere. It's really an easy workflow that ends up being quite painless. For me, I'm lucky enough to have two Continuums in my studio. So, when I am editing an Omnisphere sound, I keep this half-size Continuum set to Omnisphere Mono since it is close to the other computer with Omnisphere. And then, when I want to test the sound polyphonically, I just choose Clone Part 1 from the Utility menu in Omnisphere and turn around and play the sound polyphonically on my full-sized.